with last time what I wanted to say is that when you take the dimension of x to be r okay so you are taking x to be an irreducible closed sub var sub variety I mean irre irreducible closed subset of a n and a fine variety in a n uh, so uh, it is common to use the word sub variety when you look at a variety inside another variety so since x is an irreducible closed subset it is a variety and a n you already know is a variety so we say that x is a sub variety close sub variety of a n okay and the point is that if you start with uh, if you take any uh, chain strictly descend strictly uh, increasing or decreasing chain of uh, uh, irreducible close subsets of x and if you take if you start with indexing it with 0 and go on up to m and if you take the maximum supremum of all those m's that is going to give you the dimension of x okay and what you must understand is if that dimension of x is r and here by dimension of x I mean the topological dimension of x this is the topological dimension of x okay that is how the topological dimension is defined if that is r then you know I will that will correspond to be a strictly uh, increasing chain that is it will start with 0 and it will go on up to r. So you know uh, uh, if uh, dimension of x is r uh, we have a maximal chain uh, z0 properly contained in z1 and so on zm zr okay and what you should understand is that z0 has to be a point because if z0 is not a point and it is a maximal chain I can get a contradiction by making this chain bigger by putting a singleton point in z0 okay and that will contradict the maximality of the chain. So this is a maximal chain z0 has to be a point and zr has to be x okay zr has to be x. So again for the same reason if zr is not x then I can add x here and I will get a bigger chain okay so in so corresponding to this if you look at it in the if you look at the corresponding diagram in the in the in the polynomial ring namely the ring of functions on affine space what is happening is the following you have in k x1 etc xn you have i of x so this from x to this point of x that translates to a uh, uh, an increasing sequence i of uh, z r minus 1 properly contained in i of z r minus 2 and so on and it goes on up to i of uh, z naught this is how it goes on and mind you since z naught is a point i of z naught is a maximal ideal because points correspond to maximal ideals okay 
and uh, the smaller the smaller the irreducible closed subset the larger the ideal okay and uh, therefore this point should correspond to a maximal ideal so this is a maximal ideal in fact this maximal ideal you know it is generated by x1 minus lambda 1 x2 minus lambda 2 and so on where lambda i are the coordinates of this point you know that already okay and then what is the what is the height of ix if height the height of ix is going to be uh, you start with ix and then you get a strictly decreasing chain of prime ideals and look and the height is supposed to be the one that gives you uh, uh, a chain of a uh, maximal chain okay and so in fact what will happen is that this will be uh, you know p uh, p height of ix properly containing p height of ix minus 1 properly containing and so on and the smallest one will be 0 okay because uh, 0 is a prime ideal so the smallest one has to be 0 and the fact is that since this is a maximal chain okay and this is also a maximal chain you put these two together that will be the maximal chain that you can get for the polynomial ring and the whole thing will add up to the cruel dimension of the polynomial ring so this whole thing will be uh, this will be a maximal chain in uh, k x1 etc xn uh, so has length uh, n which is the cruel dimension the cruel dimension you know of a ring is the supremum of uh, the heights of its prime ideals okay and of course the height of the prime ideal uh, because the height is being measured from the 0 prime ideal the ring here is an integral domain so 0 is a prime ideal so you are you are measuring you are starting from the prime ideal and you are going down all the way to 0 so if the ideal becomes bigger the height becomes bigger so you can imagine that the height is ma maximum for the maximal ideals okay so this is the maximal possible height and that is the cruel dimension of this ring and that is equal to n okay and therefore but but you see if this is r this part is r then this has to be n minus r so this is why we say th this is what essentially tells you is that this part is corresponds to the fact that dimension topological dimension of x is r this is the part that tells you that the height of ix is n minus r and this whole thing is n and this n minus r with r adding up to n is what this formula says where r is the ring of polynomials in n variables and what is r mod p p is of course the ideal of x here and what is r mod p r mod p is the uh, the ideal of fun I mean is the ring of functions on x okay so what you must understand is that this height i x this part this is also equal to this also equal to the uh, 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 so I so what I want to say uh, so I wanted to say that this is also equal to the uh, dimension the cruel dimension of uh, the functions on x okay so this is this is exactly what is happening in this case okay so uh, now uh, what I want to say is I want to also look at some special cases of uh, sub varieties okay and uh, 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 but let me make one more statement here let me make one more statement here you see uh, you know ax is what this ax is actually uh, the polynomial ring 
modulo the ideal of x okay so if you give me if for example if you take this maximal chain and you go mod uh, if you go if you go mod ix if you take the image of this this whole chain in the quotient okay this is a this is a maximal chain in the polynomial ring and this is a quotient of the polynomial ring okay if you take the image of this chain there you will get this this will become zero ix will become zero in when you quotient out by ix and this will still be a maximal ideal in the quotient because you know given a ring and its quotient the maximal ideals in the quotient correspond to the maximal ideals in the original ring which contain the kernel so this maximal ideal i z0 in the quotient will also correspond to a maximal ideal and you will get a from that ideal you will go to zero okay but what is that that is precisely the uh, height of a maximal ideal in the quotient ring but that has to be the cruel dimension of the quotient ring and that is exactly n that that is exactly r because this is length is r that is what is being reflected here this e this equality that is what I want you to understand okay if you read this whole chain mod i x in the quotient ring this will become 0 and you will get from 0 to this uh, maximal ideal which is gotten by dividing each of these by ix that will give you a maximal chain in the quotient ring so its length has to be the cruel dimension of the quotient ring and therefore this is also equal to r because this length is r okay so I want you to understand this okay now uh, uh, so let me come back to what I was looking at there there are special sub varieties that we are interested in uh, in some sense in algebraic geometry uh, there are many uh, theorems there are many questions that are proved by just looking at uh, uh, the case when uh, you are looking at the locus of a single equation the locus defined by a single equation namely you look at the zeros of a single equation okay so uh, and this is called the hypersurface case so the so many 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 theorems in algebraic geometry can be proved by first looking at what happens to hypersurfaces so the uh, mm, the the point is that you know uh, uh, from the po point of view of competitive algebra why this is nice is because this corresponds to studying one equation at a time because a hypersurface is supposed to be uh, the uh, the locus given by a single equation all right so that is the importance of studying hypersurfaces right so I uh, but I will give a uh, I will give a different definition of a hypersurface so what I will say is a hypersurface is uh, uh, let us give a uh, definition which comes from dimension okay so I will define a hypersurface to be an x like this whose dimension is one less than the dimension of the big space okay that means it has co dimension one in the big space so co-dimension of a subspace in a bigger topological space is just the difference of the uh, uh, dimension of the bigger topological space minus uh, uh, and the uh, dimension of the smaller topological space so hypersurfaces so x is called a hypersurface if x has co-dimension 1 so x is called a hypersurface if dimension of x is n minus 1 okay of course whenever I write dimension of x I mean topological dimension okay so I am not going to keep writing the subscript top you must always remember that whenever I say dimension of a topological space it is always topological dimension that is something that you should not forget okay so and why the word hypersurface is because you know uh, well uh, if you are uh, uh, if you are in if you are in uh, one variable uh, then uh, there is not much because in, in the one variable case you are looking at a1 and the only closed subsets are finite subsets of so finite subsets of points you know that very well uh, so a hypersurface is just a uh, if you want just a single point okay that is that is all you will get so it is not really anything very interesting if you go to more than one variable if you go to two variables then you get a curve okay if you go to two variables 
then essentially you are in a two dimensional space and you are looking at the zeros of a one equation the dimension should uh, come you are essentially trying to look at zeros of one equation that is what you expect to happen the dimension comes down by one so in a two dimensional space a hypersurface is a one dimensional uh, closed irreducible closed subset and of course a one dimensional object is always called a curve so when n is equal to 2 you get a curve in 2 space okay when n equal to 3 you actually get a surface in 3 space okay and if n is greater than that you do not you no longer call it a surface you call it a hypersurface so the, the word hyper is reserved for n uh, uh, greater than uh, 3 okay of course if n is 3 you call it just a surface okay if n is uh, 2 then it is actually a curve in 2 space okay. Uh, now you see see there are uh, so again this is another very important thing in algebraic geometry you can make a definition from the on the geometric side you can also make a definition on the commutative algebraic side and then the question is the natural question is are these two definitions equivalent. So if I want to define a hypersurface as co dimension 1 uh, irreducible closed subset then that is a definition on the geometric side on the other hand if you want to intuitively use the fact that yeah uh, uh, something that is has one dimension less than the bigger space has to be given by a single equation then that will that will tell you that the uh, you know uh, the commutative algebraic definition will be you are looking at the zero locus of a single polynomial okay. So I can give a commutative algebraic definition okay that uh, uh, this x is a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense if the ideal of x is generated by a single polynomial okay so you see now I have two definitions so this is definition 1 then let me write let let me also put it like this x is called uh, uh, hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense if ideal of x is equal to is generated by single polynomial f for f in the polynomial ring. okay. So these are two ways of defining what a hypersurface should be this says hypersurface is given only by one equation the fact that you are using one equation is says that you are using only one polynomial so it is commutative algebraic and the topological or geometric idea of a hypersurface is that you are cutting it is a dimension based definition you are cutting by 1 okay and you can ask whether these two are the same the answer is yes the answer is yes and that uh, the proof of that involves a significant amount of commutative algebra and I will tell you what the results are that leads to the proof of that so you see uh, suppose x is a geometric hypersurface suppose x is a geometric hypersurface so uh, so my geometric hypersurface means it is hypersurface in a geometric sense according to this definition okay. So uh, again let me let me iterate, uh, reiterate this is this is what I mean by geometric hypersurface something that has dimension 1 less than the dimension of the ambient space right. I would like to show that x is commutative algebraically also a hypersurface namely that x is defined only by one equation why is that true because of the following thing see i of x is prime of course because x is irreducible so i of x has to be prime we are only worried about varieties okay uh, then you also know that height we have just now seen the the height of i of x plus the dimension of x is n right the height of i of x 
plus the dimension of x is n which is the dimension of the uh, cruel dimension of the whole polynomial ring which is the same as the dimension of the affine space okay. So, so let us write that height i x plus uh, dimension of x is equal to n we know this alright. Of course we know it means it is because of this it is because of this theorem here this formula I have written down is a theorem if r is a finitely generated k algebra namely a quotient of the polynomial ring in uh, n variables over a field and suppose it is quotient uh, by an ideal is a prime ideal so that the quotient is actually an integral domain then the cruel dimension of the quotient plus the height of the i prime ideal by which you gone modulo to get the quotient should add up to the cruel dimension of the ring okay that is a theorem okay so I am that is what is being used here. Now what is given is since it is geometric hypersurface dimension of x is n minus 1 so dimension of x is topological dimension of x is n minus 1 will tell you that height of i x is 1 okay. Now this is a theorem in commutative algebra okay so theorem uh, a noetherian integral domain is a unique factorization domain. it is written ufd for short uh, or sometimes it is also written as factorial ring in some books okay if and only if every prime ideal of height 1 is principal. This is a this is a theorem from commutative algebra. Okay. So what it says is you, you start with a ring commutative ring with one which is no ethereum Okay, which means every ideal is finitely generated, or the ideal satisfy uh, ACC as a mean chain condition, and assume that it's also an integral domain. That means it has no zero devices. It is the same as saying the zero ideal is prime. Then to conclude that it is a UFD, a unique factorization domain. Okay, namely uh, that the there is a notion of irreducible elements prime elements uh, and any element can be uniquely factored into a finite product of irreducible elements to certain finite powers and this factorization is unique up to permutation of the factors and up to units okay. So an example of a unique factorization domain is of course the polynomial ring because you know a polynomial uh, cannot can always be factored uh this so the condition that a, a noetherian integral domain is a ufd is equal to every prime ideal of height 1 being principal that means you take a prime ideal if it has height 1 then it has to be generated only by a single element okay this is the theorem now if you use this theorem use the fact that uh this ix is prime and it is a prime ideal in this polynomial ring the polynomial ring is the ufd and this uh, this is a prime ideal it has height 1 so it is principal that means the ideal is generated by a single element okay and that element has to be irreducible mind you because of that if that element breaks up as f1 f2 then ix will then x will break up as uh, 0 of f1 into 0 of f1 union 0 of f2 it will so it will not be irreducible. So the fact that x is irreducible which is equal to the fact that ix is prime tells you that this f which generates ix has to be an irreducible element okay. So put all this together so this will tell you that uh, ifx is equal to f where uh, f is an irreducible polynomial. 
and of course of course non constant it has to be non constant because you know uh, if it is constant you know if it is a non zero constant then uh, uh, then it is a unit the ideal generated by that will be the whole ring okay it cannot and the whole ring is not a prime ideal and if it is the zero constant polynomial uh, then I uh, if you take this 0 prime ideal it is height is 0 because there is nothing smaller than that. So f has to be a necessarily an irreducible polynomial it has to be a non constant polynomial so so what this tells you this tells you that that x is competitive algebraically a hypersurface. So what this tells you is that if you require uh, a, a closed sub variety to be a hypersurface the geometrically namely it has to have one dimension less uh, than the ambient space the ambient affine space then it is then it means that it has to be also commutative algebraically a hypersurface namely it has to be defined only by one equation and that one equation has to be an irreducible non constant polynomial okay. The uh, now we can go the other way also the other way is probably a little easier conversely let uh, x be a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense start with this so uh, ideal of x is f it it is defined by hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense means it is defined by single equation. So ideal of x is f I will again reiterate that f has to be an irreducible polynomial if f is equal to f1 f2 then x will become x which is 0 of f will become 0 of f1 f2 which is actually going to be 0 of f1 union 0 of f2 and uh, x irreducible will tell you that this cannot happen okay. one of them has to be uh, the whole space I mean it has to be x itself. So uh, x irreducible will imply that f is irreducible. x irreducible as a topological subs subset it will imply f is irreducible as a polynomial okay. Now what do I want to prove I want to prove that x is geometrically a hypersurface that means I have to sh show that it has height uh, I mean it has dimension n-1 what is dimension of x again you use this formula dimension of x is equal to n minus height of ix okay. So now we now we need another deep theorem another uh, deep in the sense rather fundamental theorem it is called the uh, Krull's Haupt ideal Satz okay it is called the Krull's principal ideal theorem okay. So let me state that theorem Krull's principal ideal theorem it is also written as Haupt ideal sorts and what does it say it says let if if an element uh, f in a commutative ring with 1 is uh, neither a 0 divisor nor 
a unit then every minimal prime ideal uh, containing f has height 1 I just say that um, the commutative ring is assumed Noetherian uh, is assumed let me put that uh, uh, for safety sake ok. So, this is, this is another important thing in algebraic geometry the fact is that the most sophisticated part of algebraic geometry is supposed to work over any ring not even over Noetherian rings. But at least when you are doing decent amount of geometry you uh, really want to work only with Noetherian rings because you get Noetherian decomposition for example ok. So, uh, for example you know the Noetherian decomposition in affine space uh, which told you that any algebraic set can be decomposed uniquely into a finite union of uh, fine closed sub varieties which are unique if the decomposition is not redundant that is no such uh, closed sub varieties contained in any other in the decomposition. This comes out of the Noetherian property of the topological space ok and therefore in it is a it is a it is usual that you always work with uh, at least in the in a first course in algebraic geometry you always work only with Noetherian rings. Uh, so, it is harmless to assume things in Noetherian of course, it is a matter of uh, technical expertise to see which of the theorems will still go through if you remove the Noetherian hypothesis ok. But the point I want is to say is that uh, look at what this says see the beauty with uh, uh, commutative algebra is that if you translate it to algebraic geometry uh, it actually has a meaning ok and it is as follows see e at least in this case see you see if so what it says you take an take a commutative ring with 1 assume it is no ethereum if you want take an element f ok assume the element is not a 0 divisor ok uh, and assume it is not a unit right. Then you look at the ideal generated by that single element f ok and you can talk about the minimal you can talk about prime ideals which contain that element f there are such in fact uh, any uh, non trivial ideal in a commutative ring non zero commutative ring is always contained in a maximal ideal any prop any proper ideal is always contained in a maximal ideal this is uh, if you want a uh, consequence of zorn's lemma ok. But uh, therefore uh, you know if you take the ideal generated by f it is a proper ideal it is a proper ideal because f is not a unit all right and the ideal generated by f contains uh, 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 it certainly is contained in a maximal ideal more generally you can look at prime ideals also which contain the ideal f ideal generated by f and what the theorem says is that if you look at any minimal prime smallest among these set of primes which contain f the height of such a prime is 1 ok. So, it is it is uh, what it says is that you take a minimal prime containing f then between then from that prime that prime has height 1 ok between that and this uh, the, uh, the smallest possible prime ok f is caught f is caught there in between these two ok. Of course, the smallest possible prime will be the 0 ideal if the if the ring is an integral domain ok in which case you are saying that the ideal generated by f is caught between uh, the 0 ideal and the smallest prime which contains f each of the smallest primes which contain f. So, there are two facts I want to tell you uh, let us first apply it to our situation in our situation our commutative ring is of course, uh, the polynomial ring in n variables ok and here is uh, and the and the element f is a uh, single non constant irreducible polynomial ok. If you will take the ideal generated by f that is already a prime ideal mind you the ideal generated by a uh, single element is always a prime ideal. In fact, the truth is that if you take 
any unique factorization domain and you take a irreducible element there that is an element which cannot be factored into s smaller elements okay into non trivial factors which which we tend to call as smaller elements okay smaller factors such an irreducible element if you take the ideal generated by that that will be prime okay so since the polynomial ring is a unique factorization domain and since you have started with an irreducible polynomial which is an irreducible element in a unique factorization domain the ideal generated by that element will be a will be a prime ideal so this is certainly a prime ideal so if you look at this any minimal prime ideal which contains this it has to be this itself if when you look at the minimal prime ideal generated by an element f it will be different from f it will different it will be different from the ideal generated by f only if the ideal generated by f is not a prime ideal if the ideal generated by f is a prime ideal then the, then uh, the minimal prime ideal which contains the ideal generated by f is at the ideal generated by f itself so if you apply krull's principal ideal theorem what it will tell you is that the height of f is 1 the height of the ideal generated by f is 1 but the height of the ideal generated by f is the same as uh, height of ix so it will tell you so this will tell you that height that dimension of x is actually n minus 1 which which will tell you that x is geometrically a hypersurface it tell you x is a geometric hypersurface So, what you've got is that if you start with a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense, you get a hypersurface in the geometric sense. And we have already seen the other way. If you start with a geometric hypersurface, then it is a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense. So both these definitions are the same. This definition is completely geometric. It's it's by it's gotten by saying that it's one dimension less. It's co-dimension one. This definition is commutative algebraic. You're saying you're looking at only zeros of one equation. And they are one and the same. Okay, this is again. I mean, this is what you should always appreciate. There's something going on here, which has complete uh, translation in this side. Okay, and of course, uh, these two theorems here, which come into the picture, they are they are very very important. And uh, at some point, uh, if you have not already seen them uh, in co in a course in commutative algebra, uh, you can. You should make it a point to uh, set aside some time for extra reading, and if you can, when you can do that, try to look at a sketch of a proof of uh, theorems like this. But what I want to tell you is that there's geometric significance. So, for example, suppose f is not. Uh, so uh, let me explain uh, more generally what this statement is saying. Suppose f is not an irreducible polynomial. Okay. What does what does this statement say? It has a geometric meaning. What is it? It's the following. Let me write that. Let me try to explain that. You see, suppose f in the polynomial ring is non-constant and f is equal to let us write f1, f2, etcetera, fm be uh, its uh, factorization, unique factorization. Okay, with each fi irreducible. So, this is again the fact that any polynomial can be if it is not irreducible you can break it down into a product of factors each one of which is irreducible and of course I am writing it like this but there could be uh, some factors could repeat okay. So you know let me write it uh, uh, so you know maybe I should put powers to be to be very accurate so you know if I will have to put something like uh, uh, n uh, so n1 f1 power n1 f2 power n2 fm power n sub m so if i write it like this then you know i i, I mean that no fi is e the same as any other fj okay uh, 
and these you know these powers are all uniquely determined this is just like the uh, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic where you say any integer can be uniquely factored into product of prime powers the primes occurring are unique and the powers of each prime that occur are unique and it is the same thing that is happening in the polynomial ring in several variables okay and that is why it is a unique factorization domain. Now uh, uh, of course here uh, that uh, I can I can always push in or pull out a constant uh, so this factorization is unique up to a unit which is a, a non zero element of k okay. Now if you look at the zero set of f okay then this you know it is just going to be zero set of f1 union zero set of f2 union zero set of fn this is what it is going to be this is what you are going to get right because 0 set of f will be 0 set of f1 power n1 union 0 set of f2 power n2 and you must understand the 0 set of a power of f is the same as this same as 0 set of f itself because the set of points where a power of a polynomial vanishes is the same as the set of points where the polynomial vanishes. So when I go to the 0 set all these powers are gone I do not care about the powers. Now if you watch look at each zfi each zfi is irreducible as a subset it is an irreducible closed subset why because each fi is already an irreducible polynomial and you know uh, since each fi is an irreducible polynomial and it is an irreducible element in the polynomial ring which is a uft the ideal generated by an irreducible element is a prime ideal so the ideal generated by each fi is a prime ideal and the zero set of that prime ideal is therefore an irreducible subset okay therefore each z fi is irreducible and what and of course no z fi is contained in some other z fj that is because no fi divides any other fj they are all distinct uh, irreducible polynomials okay that is what unique factorization means when you write into, into product of factors the factors are not repeating certainly okay it is only to take care of repetitions that you put the powers right. Now watch these are all irreducible closed subsets okay if you look at this what is this this is actually the noetherian theory and decomposition of f this the way I have written it this is the noetherian theory and decomposition of f mind you z of f is an algebraic set z of f is not a it is not an irreducible algebraic set because f is not the ideal generated by f is not a prime ideal that is because f is not uh, f is not irreducible all right and uh, by and you know the noetherian decomposition is unique noetherian decomposition says that if you have a noetherian topological space you have a closed subset uh, then the closed subset can be written as a finite union of irreducible closed subsets and this decomposition is unique if you assume that uh, none of these subsets is contained in any of the others okay so this is the noetherian theory and decomposition of course up to a permutation of the of these zfis okay if you watch if you take the if you take the uh, if you go go to the uh, 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 go to this case uh, go to what we have proved so far that uh, geometric hypersurface is the same as uh, a hypersurface uh, in the commutative algebraic sense what it will tell you is that each of these has dimension in minus 1 each of these is a hypersurface. So what it will tell you is z of f is a union of hypersurfaces z of f is a union of hypersurfaces it is a union of hypersurface and if you look at let me let me uh, uh, let me look at the following let me do the let me give a tentative definition how did I define the uh, how did I define the coordinate ring uh, I mean the the ring of functions on a closed subset I simply defined it as uh, the uh, the ring of functions on affine space modulo the the ideal of that set okay now what I will do is 
I will just I will just put a of z of f ok. So, as polynomial ring modulo the ideal generated by f make this definition ok make this definition this is not a very good definition for the reason that since the ideal generated by f is not prime you are going the ideal modulo which you are going is not a prime therefore this crazy thing is not an integral domain this quotient ring is not an integral domain. So for example in this quotient ring f1 f you see f1 bar f2 bar fm bar which are the images of f's the fi's in this quotient you see they are, they are if you raise them to the power these powers and multiply them you will get 0 but individually they are not 0 they are so each fi it the image of each fi here is a 0 divisor mind you and but the point is in this ring see in the if you look at so 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 let me let me write that this is a quotient of k x1 through xn okay now take a prime ideal p which contains f okay a prime ideal p contains f if you go down here okay it will give rise to a prime ideal p bar which will contain uh, 0 okay it will be a prime ideal p bar which will contain 0 and what you should understand is that for each of these prime ideals I can take uh, the ideal generated by f i's okay you take the uh, since f uh, since f i divides f the ideal generated by f i will be multiples of f i and f is also multiple of f i so the ideal generated by f i will contain the ideal generated by f okay anything which is a multiple of f is also multiple of any f i so I can take a prime ideal which contains f i okay that will correspond to the prime ideal generated by f i bar in the quotient ring okay and the fact is that uh, these these f i's they will be the smallest prime ideals which contain f that is because of this uh, unique factorization you will have to do a you have to uh, convince yourself that the smallest prime ideals which contain f in this ring are precisely the f i's okay and what does Krull's principal ideal theorem say it says that in the polynomial ring itself the smallest prime ideals which contain this f have height 1 in other words what it says is if you if you commutative algebraically look at only 0 of a single equation but do not insist that the 0 set is irreducible you will not get a geometric hypersurface but you will get a union of geometric hypersurfaces that is what it says that is the that is the full content of this theorem okay. See you can ask this question right a, a commutative algebraic surface is if you want to just define it as a surface which is given by a single equation since I already want something that is irreducible that single equation has to be irreducible but if I relax the condition that the uh, that the uh, the locus is not irreducible then it is just an algebraic set. So you are looking at the single 0 you are looking at the 0 locus of a single polynomial the polynomial is not necessarily irreducible then what it what this says is if it is irreducible then it is a hypersurface if it is not irreducible it is a union of hypersurfaces that is what it says that is why that should tell you uh, why the statement of this theorem uh, involves the minimal prime ideals which contain f you see they become relevant in this non irreducible case the minimal prime ideals that contain f they correspond to the uh, ideals that correspond to the irreducible components of uh, the zero set of f that is the uh, that is the connection the geometric connection to this statement okay and the importance with uh, the importance with this theorem is that you know you can ask more generally this question 
So this is also part of algebraic geometry. You have something nice happening, okay? For for us, we have already we have always started with the polynomial ring and n variables, but mo you can you can work with more general rings. If you work with more general rings, you can ask the question: When will this be true? You start with a you a geometric hypersurface is the same as a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense. For what kind of uh, spaces will it be true based on the ring of functions on those spaces and that is the answer given by that is the geometry content of this theorem what it says is if your space has a ring of functions which is a unique factorization domain okay if your space is such that its ring of functions is a unique factorization domain there is no difference between a commutative algebraic hypersurface and a geometric hypersurface that is what it says that is the geometry content of this theorem okay. So what you should understand is this is the point about algebraic geometry you have some statements which are completely statements in commutative algebra but if you translate them they they translate into something very geometric. So you know how to define what a unique factorization domain is in a commutative algebraic sense it is a it is a uh, you know it is it is a it is an integral domain in which you have unique factorization every element can be written as a product of powers of irreducible elements in a unique way okay that is what a unique factorization domain is this is a commutative algebraic definition but what does it geometrically mean. So geometrically you can say if you geometrically you always think of rings as rings of functions on some space. So algebraic geometrically how to define a unique factorization domain one way is you say I mean look at all uh, you can a ring of functions uh, if you want to think of a ring of functions is a UFD then the space must have the property that uh, the geometric hypersurfaces should be the same as the hypersurfaces in the algebraic geom in the, uh, the commutative algebraic sense it is for those spaces uh, that the rings of functions can be called unique factorization domains okay. So what you must understand is that this unique factorization which is a very you know completely algebraic statement it is a purely commutative algebraic kind of statement that has the geometric significance that uh, define uh, subs uh, loci defined by single equations are the same as loci which have co dimension 1 you see that is the that is how you geometrically interpret the completely algebraic definition of what a unique factorization domain is okay it is see the whole beauty of algebraic geometry lies in this you take com something completely commutative algebraic completely see what it means geometrically and you do the other way also. So this is this is an example as to how you can make this translation okay. So I, I in my next lecture uh, what I will do is I still have to explain how the inverse of this A function is the max spec function so I will have to do that so I will do that in the next lecture.